Hello everyone, uh, I would like to welcome you all for today's lecture. Uh, we will briefly look at what we did uh, last time. We looked at some aspects of uh, Claisen rearrangement and their variations uh, in terms of uh, substage structure. Uh, for example, the last one that uh, we took was Zwitter ionic Claisen rearrangement which was uh, close to the ketene based reaction. Here the substrate was slightly different. Uh, for example, if we start with this allylamine and react it with uh, this acid chloride in the presence of a Lewis acid, then what we discussed was that the reaction proceeds through this uh, enolate and of course uh, it leads to the formation of the corresponding product like this in which the R2 and R3 groups were uh, anti-displosed. But of course we can uh, take uh, differently uh, oriented this particular double bond that means uh, uh, cis and then we can get uh, different stereochemistry in the final product. Likewise we also uh, you looked at the chromium based oxidation particularly in the uh, enone transposition of this type to this type uh, by um, introducing an R group here uh, and uh, carrying out the oxidative rearrangement of this kind of tertiary allylic alcohol. Uh, this rearrangement was uh, a kind of uh, uh, reminiscence of um, the Claisen rearrangement and therefore we had a nice way of converting one enone to the other enone uh, by introducing another uh, substituent at the position where the ketone was present. Also we looked at the Overman rearrangement where conversion of allyl alcohol to the corresponding allyl amine via a transposition of the uh, double bond was seen and it was uh, proceeded via trichloroacetamidate. Finally, we looked at the Bamford-Stevens reactions and Shapiro reactions, uh, uh, say particularly the Shapiro reaction which we discussed in the end was basically converting a tosylhydrazone to the corresponding vinyl lithium or vinyl anion and first we looked at uh, the reaction of this uh, vinyl anion with DMF to form the corresponding vinyl aldehyde. Now uh, it can be possible to make use of this uh, vinyl uh, anion uh, to react with chlorotimidyl silane and uh, uh, generate a very important intermediate which is a vinyl silane. So uh, today we would like to look at the reactions of vinyl silane and how do they give different types of products. So supposing if we take the vinyl silane which is uh, uh, made by the method of uh, uh, Shapiro reaction and if Ex is used as you can as it is shown here is uh, if SiMe3 then we can carry out uh, epoxidation using metachlorobenzoic acid and it is very interesting to see that such epoxides which are basically derived from vinyl silanes when they are reacted with different nucleophiles say for example lithium aluminum hydride. So what you have in lithium aluminum hydride is, a, is a, a something of this kind. We have here edge and minus here and a positive charge here. So this is what the uh, lithium aluminum looks like. So this is the hydride that is what is going to act as a nucleophile. Now it is uh, very interesting to see that there is a regioselectivity in terms of reduction of this particular epoxide and it opens up in this fashion. So there is no reaction here, there is no reaction here but there is a reaction at this center. Now this is uh, a very intriguing because uh, the nucleophile actually should be expected to attack on a sterically less hindered situation that is the carbon holding the R1 could be and also because one could expect uh, some other effects of silicon. But what is happening here is the nucleophile attacks on the carbon alpha to silicon and it is favored by simultaneous interaction 
of the approaching electron pair that means the hydrogen is approaching with the electron pair with the antibonding orbital on the epoxide. So, you have this particular antibonding orbital of the epoxide carbon oxygen bond and the vacant 3D orbitals of the silicon. So, basically when, when this is approaching here of course, when it is approaching here also it will be the same thing as far as antibonding orbital of the carbon oxygen bond is concerned. But here additional factor is that the anion interacts also with the empty d orbitals 3 d orbitals of the silicon simultaneously. Therefore, this hydrogen here H minus tries to interact with the empty 3 d orbitals of the silicon as well as the <coughs> antibonding orbital of the CO and thus it, it reflects the uh, regiochemistry of the reduction that is observed. This is quite given in much detail in this particular reference that one can uh, look at it uh, if one wants to know a little bit more detail about this particular observations. And now if we oxidize this uh, uh, particular uh, silanol, uh, we can get the corresponding uh, uh, ketone here and what one can do is if we simply work up this particular substrate here then you can imagine that there will be there will be a desilylation readily happening and then one can get the corresponding ketone. So, if one looks at it what we have done it is we started with a ketone and through the Shapiro reaction we got the corresponding vinyl lithium and if that vinyl lithium supposing if we say that the vinyl lithium was something of this kind vinyl lithium here. So, you have vinyl lithium and that leads to the formation of the vinyl silane and then that eventually has been converted to the corresponding ketone. So, you can see that the ketone was here now the ketone has come next to the R1 group. So, this was one carbon away from the carbonyl group. So, this is what is called as 1 to ketone transposition. So, this is a very interesting application of the silane based chemistry where vinyl silanes can be epoxidized reduced followed by oxidation to convert a ketone into another ketone and which is what is 1 2 ketone transposition. Now, we go for another uh, 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 topic where we try to look at how allyl metal additions are taking place on, on a carbonyl group. Say for example, if we have a substrate of uh, this kind where we have an aldehyde and we try and take uh, an allyl metal uh, kind of uh, substrate and um, if we uh, attack the uh, uh, double allyl group onto this we can convert aldehyde into homoallyl alcohol here. This homoallyl alcohol is very useful because you can carry out epoxidation and get an epoxide here which can allow many more manipulations of the functional groups. You can cleave the double bond here by ozonolysis uh, and then of course, you can get the corresponding aldehyde. You can do the hydroboration oxidation and you can think about various different types of reactions of the double bond dihydroxylation. You can also carry out something like called as olefin metathesis which we will uh, look at later on. Of course, uh, cycloadditions can be carried out you have a double bond. So, you can carry out cycloaddition reactions and you also can carry out hydroformylation reactions. Now, these types of uh, uh, substrate scopes and uh, reaction scopes are numerous and therefore, what are what is this M X N or what is M? M can be lithium, magnesium, boron, chromium, tin, silicon, zinc, etcetera 
many of these things have been studied and of course depending on which is, uh, kind of metal has been used uh, there are different types of uh, reactive uh, re reaction parameters and the stereoselectivity or the regioselectivity depends on various factors of this kind. So, we will look at a few of them in this particular course. Now, if we um, look at uh, the crotyl based uh, re reactions uh, say for example, if we uh, look at uh, something like this here uh, you have uh, an M x here then how does this reaction occur. Now, it is uh, seen that uh, usually uh, you have the reaction going via this that means you have here RCH2 RCHO for example here then we can carry out the reaction of the two and one can get the corresponding alcohol here with uh, the uh, double bond being here. That means uh, the reaction takes place at alpha, beta and the gamma position. So, this is the gamma position, this is the beta position, this is the alpha position. But what about uh, how can we carry out the reaction at the alpha position for example to get to a molecule like this or a molecule like this. That means depending on which direction say for example, if this happens to be S R 1 and then of course, you will have this as R 1. But if it wants to get something like this from uh, a trans uh, uh, crotyl substrate or a cis crotyl substrate then uh, or, or you have something like this. So, with how are we going to get it? that we will look at it little bit later. Now, uh, there are uh, many other substrates which are uh, very, very important like such as uh, allyl silanes. So, if we have an allyl MXN bond, then if we react with say uh, chlorotrimylsilane or any other uh, silyl halide or uh, triflate whatever, then we can get the allyl silane. And if we react with this uh, R to uh, B O M E then we can get the corresponding allyl boranes. If we react with trimethyl uh, uh, this uh, trimethoxyborane here for example then we can get allyl boronate and if we react with the 10 X then we can get the allyl st stannine. So, we have allyl boranes, allyl boronates, allyl stannines and allyl silanes and reacting with any one of these um, uh, substrates where lithium, magnesium or potassium is generally used. Of course, you can also exchange this particular uh, this uh, methoxies by uh, other alcohols and accordingly one can prepare these types of uh, boronates. So, these various kinds of such allyl uh, substrates have been utilized in the organic synthesis and these are some of the very popular reaction uh, reactions in which the silicon. Uh, tin, tin and boron based uh, reactions have been utilized it. Now, what happens is that when we have uh, an allyl silane then you have to have a very uh, strong activation because uh, the carbon silicon bond here is uh, fairly strong and covalent bond and uh, it is not possible to react the double bond with, uh, with uh, any electrophile unless it is strongly activated. We will study about that a little bit later. Uh, allyl stalins uh, on the other hand react upon heating or in presence of moderate uh, Lewis acid activation because carbon silicon uh, versus carbon tin bond the, the polarization is somewhat different. Allyl boranes can react with aldehydes in absence of activators even at minus 100 degrees. So, allyl boranes are extremely reactive and uh, on the other hand allyl boronates can react to aldehydes at room temperature in absence of activators though they are slow. So, as you can see that each one of them has some merit and some uh, demerit. So, uh, we will look at uh, the reactions of some of these and see how uh, they lead to different products under different conditions. Now, if you look at the crotyl metals then, then crotyl metal uh, somewhat like this can be uh, 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 written up 
is in equilibrium with this and it is found that if uh, MXN that is the metal is either MgX or lithium then there is a fast equilibration. On the other hand uh, the, when this is a potassium here it is supposed to be going via a slow equilibration. So basically uh, what is happening is that MgX or lithium plus could uh, easily coordinate with the double bond and undergo rearrangement. So that means if we start with a cis double bond here and it can be in equilibrium with the trans double bond. Obviously the trans double bond is more stable and therefore many reactions proceed via trans products. But if we start with a, uh, with a potassium um, metal containing substrate then it does not undergo equilibration that fast and therefore we can stop it. For example here if we, we, if we deprotonate this particular uh, olefin using a combination of potassium tertiary butoxide and n-butyl lithium which is supposedly called as a super base because the uh, tertiary butoxide interacts with the uh, lithium plus and then you generate a strong base as n-butyl minus and that takes the proton away from here and it forms a potassium salt of the corresponding anion. And if now we react it with this uh, trimethyl uh, borate here then we can get the corresponding boronate here. Now the, here the double bond geometry is retained. So all throughout the double bond geometry is retained. On the other hand if we start with the trans uh, double bond then of course we can, uh, we can also retain that in the, in the substrate that is obtained in the end that is the boronate. Now if uh, reaction is carried out with the aldehyde for example here then uh, what is obtained is, is something like this here that goes in here, that goes in here and that comes in here. And that is how one gets the corresponding um, uh, product as it is here. On the other hand when it is, uh, it is cis now here Y and MX and are trans to each other and that is what is happen, happening here. Now as uh, you can see that when they are cis to each other this uh, syn product is formed and this is anti product. But interestingly this is not formed with this and this is not formed with this. So that means it is a highly uh, stereo specific reaction. So if we, if we take these two we get um, this product and if we take these two then we get this product. How does this reaction occur? We will discuss it about it uh, through the various transition states that we can think about it. But before that as you can see we have some examples. Uh, if we start with uh, an aldehyde of this kind and react with the allyl boronate of this type in which the double bond has uh, uh, a mixture of E and Z isomers in which the E isomer is uh, dominating that is 90 is to 10. Then when the reaction occurs we get the uh, corresponding uh, homoallyl alcohol as the product in which the anti syn ratio is uh, 98 is to 2. That means anti uh, product is the major product. Uh, on the other hand if we start uh, with an allyl uh, halide or allyl uh, substrate of this kind in which the double bond is uh, cis oriented and react with chromium chloride then uh, what happens is initially there is an oxidative addition to form this kind of uh, chromium species uh, which still has that double bond in the cis orientation but then it undergoes fast equilibration to the uh, chromium species of this kind in which the double bond now has become trans oriented which uh, can also be obtained if we start with the corresponding trans allyl uh, starting material instead of cis allyl starting material then we get this uh, mainly as the uh, chromium species having the trans oriented double bond. Now this particular trans oriented double bond containing chromium species then reacts with uh, the aldehyde and leads to the formation of the anti uh, homoallyl alcohol as the major product. Now the way reaction works is uh, this uh, 
uh, chromium species interacts with the aldehyde where there is a chelation between chromium and the oxygen of course and then there is a cc bond formation here leading to the uh, expected homoallyl alcohol as the major product in anti uh, uh, stereochemistry uh, as, as shown here now how do these reactions of allyl boronates uh, proceed with uh, aldehydes then we can look at it carefully in what is the transition state for example if we start with this uh, allyl boronate in which the double bond is trans oriented and react with say a benzaldehyde followed by basic workup it leads to the formation of the corresponding homoallyl alcohol uh, in which the syn anti ratio is 5 is to 95 that means the anti product is a major product now uh, we look at the transition state uh, which is like this in which the benzaldehyde is oriented in such a way that the phenyl group is equatorially uh, placed and then the oxygen interacts with the boron uh, of the allyl boronate which has a trans uh, double bond as shown here in this condition then the carbon carbon bond formation takes place and of course that leads to the formation of the anti uh, as the major product likewise if we start with the cis allyl boronate uh, then we get the corresponding homoallyl alcohol as the major product in which syn anti ratio now is 94 is to 6 that means now syn product is the major product again we can write the similar type of uh, transition state uh, we write that the benzaldehyde uh, is put in such a fashion that oxygen of course chelates with the boron but the phenyl group again remains in the equatorial position now the products that are formed from these two transition states could be written up uh, like this here as a sawhorse projection or a newman projection or in a zigzag fashion and also from here we can write a similar type of uh, 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 orientations of the product. Now um, we will stop it today and we will look at some of the aspects of these types of reactions uh, next time. Till then, uh, bye and thank you and take care. We'll see you next time.